and welcome to Books and Beyond. I'm your host, Jimmy Bennett. Um, Books and Beyond usually is a show where I try to uh, help people personify their uh, personify their aspirations. I, I, I try to take ordinary people that have creative talents and let them highlight it. Um, there's a lot of uh, great local talent around here. There's writers, painters, um, all kinds of different uh, talents people have. And, you know, it's, it's good to get let people show it and uh, let people know what's around you all the time. Um, I myself am an author. I have three books out uh, in the William Gillette series. Um, and I also uh, am a co-chairman of the Southeastern Connecticut chapter of the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. Um, we're an organization for writers, editors, publishers, uh, agents, anybody that uh, wants to um, have anything to do with the written word. And we encourage people to join our meetings, uh, come in. I mean, obviously right now, uh, we're not have meeting in person, we're doing Zoom meetings, but um, the, the links are always up on the Southeastern Connecticut, Connecticut and Authors Published Association on Facebook. And uh, you can click in and see what we're all about. Um, uh, Brian Judd, my guest today, is one of the founding members of CAPA, the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. Now there's three chapters in Connecticut. He's also the director of the Association of Publishers for Special Sales. And we're going to talk a little bit today about how we can get our work out, uh, work out there, try to uh, sell some books or, you know, at least uh, let people know we're around while uh, things are locked down as they have been. So I want to welcome you, Brian. Thank you for coming on the show. And my pleasure, Jimmy. Thanks for inviting me. So um, now tell me a little bit about, uh, just talk to me a little bit about CAPA. How have you founded it and what your goals are? And Sure. Yeah, I, I started uh, started CAPA in 1994, actually. I started writing my own books. Uh, I was in the corporate world. I got laid off, so I started writing books as a new career. And I was looking around for help. I'd, I'd never written a book. I didn't know how to market it, so I started looking for help. And there was no local organization that could provide that help. There are several national groups, which I joined. So I thought it'd be good to have a, a local organization. So I went to the different uh, bookstores around the area, asked who, what authors they knew of that were doing book signings or events. And I contacted them. We started off with eight people. And we, start, we started the, uh, the group. We had uh, two meetings a month in Avon in 1994 and just built it up from eight. That We have over 200 members now. Wow, I didn't realize, is it that big up there? I think we got about 40, 45 down here in Southeastern Connecticut. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you have probably the largest. So, and I, I can personally attest to how much it helped. Uh, oh, good. I always wanted to write a book, and, you know, I was in the same boat. I, you know, writing is just, as you know, just a small part of what ha has to be done yeah. Oh, yeah. to get it published, edited, and get it out there. Um, That's the easy part. So, when I uh, I joined Kappa, I wow! I really opened my eyes and taught me a lot. And uh, within a year, you know, I'd published my first book, okay. and you know, I've been moving along since then. So, and I really attribute that to to joining Kappa. Uh, I'm not sure if I would have ever followed through if I hadn't had that encouragement and the knowledge and the experience, you know, uh, to do it. Um, That's one of our biggest benefits of providing the uh, motivation, support. And, and information about uh, book marketing because we, in times like this or just in general, we get uh, beat up a lot. We spend a lot of time alone writing or marketing and uh, get a lot of negativity from reviewers or from uh, other sources. So it's good to have that camaraderie of a local meeting. Yes. Um, you know, uh, even uh, we're trying to, it's, it's harder now, a little harder now to do it by Zoom, um, obviously. Um, it's not as intimate. You don't have yeah. the contact and, you know, get to see everybody. Um, but, you know, we're trying to keep everybody motivated, moving along. In fact, uh, this month we have a writing contest um, going on for a, for a nice gift certificate. Um, I'll spring that on everybody at the next uh, meeting. Um, so, but I just wanted to put in real quick, I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, everybody, anybody that's putting in a, uh, 
a submission for the writing contest has to be to Patty Brooks by June 5th to give uh, our judge time to read them over and uh, pick a winner. Um, now, Brian, I, I got to say, I've been especially frustrated this winter. I published a book. Uh, I published my third book at the beginning of the year. And, you know, I was all hepped up about getting out there and doing some book signings and uh, doing some appearances or whatever and trying to get things rolling. But obviously everything came to a screeching halt uh, before things started happening. A lot of the events that I usually do are canceled. Um, there's no social gatherings, obviously. Um, so how can I – what can I do now? How can I move forward? Good. That's a great question. I think a lot of a lot of different ways in which that can be done. I think starting out with when I didn't know that much about book marketing, it's the best thing that happened to me, because I thought that that uh, you sell books through bookstores, and I learned about uh, distribution discounts and return books and ninety day payments. So I thought there's got to be uh, has to be other ways of doing it, and that's what led me to the, some of these new opportunities and, and special sales of non non bookstore marketing. But I think that if you look at opportunities now, the bookstores are closed, but they may be for a while. I'm not sure when they'll reopen, but there are a lot of places that are selling books now. Think of supermarkets, uh, pharmacies, discount stores, warehouse clubs. They're all open and they sell books. So if you can create distribution to these, uh, uh, it, it can take a while for that to occur, a month or so to get the distributors to accept it and then fill the shelves. But if you can get that foothold now, it's a real good way of doing it. And uh, so, well, there are there are even pet stores. You think of some of the lo local stores or the, the smaller retailers that can buy directly from you. So you can contact these people, go there with your mask on, and and uh, carry some books with you, and go to the local pet stores or go to the Pet Industry Distributors Association and get them to take you to. That will take a little longer, but then you get into Petco and the Pet Smarts of the, of the world. But uh, also figure the academic marketplace. Uh, public schools are closed. I, I was teaching a course at Central Connecticut and that uh, closed and I'm teaching an online course at University of Hartford now. But the, the school the school opportunity is still there through homeschooling. If you go to the National Association of Homeschool uh, Homeschoolers and get them to resell your book through their networks or give them a percentage of your book and, and have them give you the names of people to contact, you can do that yourself, but that's something you can do right away. So you, you get into retailers, you get into uh, schools, uh, pet stores, any type of, of um, uh, retailer that's, that's open at this point. And they're hopefully opening more of those as we go along. But so there are opportunities to prepare for that. So that's the setting up the distribution. And then, but there are a lot of other marketing techniques, Jimmy, that, that people can do. First of all, just uh, social social networking, uh, working on your platform, contacting the, uh, well, for Facebook and Twitter, but also I think that when you're, if you can work towards the non-retail sector, corporations, associations, get on, on LinkedIn to uh, meet these people, let them know about you, about your book, and, and join groups on there to participate in groups. Because the more you can get your name around, the more likely that these people will recognize you when you contact them to uh, sell them your book when this is all over. So it's an exposure medium. Right, right now, trying to do a lot of exposure. You can do the direct selling, which I'll get into. But you can do it. It's getting a, more exposure, getting things built up. So when this is over, you're much more likely to hit the ground running. There are um, book clubs, not just the major book clubs, but a lot of niche book clubs or book clubs for, for romance. If you're writing fiction uh, for no, science fiction, but rom uh, book clubs for, for business books. So if you can uh, contact these book clubs, even catalogs, these, they have, particularly if your book is in the writing stage, they, they're looking for the a fairly completed manuscript, but you know, four to five months prior to pub date. So they they can have their book in their catalog and their book club when it's when it's launched. So these are some of this, uh, you can do the research to find these now. And then actually, uh, if your book is still in the writing stage uh, before that, you can do the research, find out these uh, clubs and, and catalogs. And so when you're at that four to five month stage, then you can contact them directly with your manuscript. So they're, they're not looking for finished covers, finished manuscripts. They're looking for the, the content idea. And 
that's another thing that you can do is when I ask people, I do a lot of uh, consulting among authors and I ask them, I say, who's your target reader? Who's your target market? Everybody, everybody who likes fiction is my target reader. But it's, it's still a bit difficult to, to contact everybody. So I look at the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why. You know, who are they? If it's a, an older demographic, maybe you want to have a large print book. If it's a uh, lower income demographic, maybe you want to have your book in discount stores. If there are older people that are, are in the corporate world traveling, well, then you get into bookstores and for airports, which that's going to take you a while. But once everything picks up again, you have your book on the shelf there. So then another question is, where do they shop? If it's a young family that's, uh, that maybe they want to be in the supermarkets or dollar stores or some places, where, or kids stores, if you're contacting uh, manufacturers of cribs or strollers or car seats and get them to buy your book in bulk and then they, they give them to the retailers. So if somebody buys their crib, they get a free copy of your book as, as, a, uh, as a thank thank you for it. So there are these events that you can uh, put in place now for uh, when, the, when all these stores reopen. But again, you're thinking about where do your target readers shop? Uh, when do they buy? Do they buy your book as, as a gift, as something like that? If you have anything, Jimmy, any, any kind of book now with content information about things to do at home, that it may be crafts or, or recipes, uh, exercises. If your book has that information, well, you want to get on the media. Contact the, the, the radio shows, TV shows. They're, they're looking for that kind of content. If people are at home. They're, they're, they've already gone through all their, uh, their board games several times, and, and now they're, they're, they don't know what else to do. But if, if you have get on these radio shows and talk about your content, and the people can still buy it on Amazon or buy it from your website. But the, I think you have a great opportunity of getting on these shows now because they're anything about pandemics or epidemics or uh, – uh, vaccines, that type of information. But I think primarily uh, ideas about activities, family activities that can be done at home and that the media would, would love that because they've got to fill have to fill up their airtime and they, they want information that's uh, applicable, wanted by their, their audiences. So that, that's a great opportunity. Being on a show like yours, you still get exposure for that. that, that so you, you have these authors on your show or artists, other creative people, as you mentioned. So they can they still get on the, these TV shows. So you can do a search on that. Uh, for the, let's take a step back on, on the radio shows. There's a website called uh, radio-locator, radio-locator.com. And put in a zip code and it gives you a list of all the radio stations there by format. So you can sit at home and do radio shows in, from here in Connecticut, do a radio show in, in New York, Chicago, L.A., San Francisco, Dallas, wherever you can. Uh, excuse me a second here. So you can do a national radio launch of your book without leaving home. And it's very easy to do. You go to that site, look at the, the, uh, the format of the station that has applicable to your content for, for children or for cooking or for business. And then it's a hot link to their website. So it gives you the producer's name, the producer's contact information. So you create your, uh, your pitch letter which is another thing you could be doing while this is uh, going on, creating, well, it's creating two things, actually, uh, Jamie. One is your pitch letter, a uh, sell sheet, but also a 20-second uh, voicemail message. Because when you contact the media or contact the distributors, most likely you'll get voicemail. But if you can contact, uh, create a, a brief, succinct, uh, attention-getting 20 second voicemail message, then you'll, you'll leave that. And if you follow the sequence AIDA, attention, interest, desire, and action. So you don't want to start off telling how great your book is. You say how great your, you, your book is for your audience. And then if you're contacting the media, for example, that would get them a, get, at least get their attention and the interest, desire, and action. Give them your phone number. So you have, or email address. So that uh, contacting the media, certainly something. Contacting, uh, working on, on, on your website, updating it, uh, adding a special uh, COVID discount, something like that. Tend to have some fun, not make fun of, but have fun with the situation. But uh, updating your website, maybe having current news in your genre. I, uh, as you said before, I'm the executive director of the Association of Publishers for Special Sales. Every day, I put a, a new book marketing tip on my on my homepage of the website for that. 
So it lets people, hopefully bringing more people back to it, getting more exposure for the association and, and repetition of that exposure. So that, that's going to help us when things get back to back to normal also. You know, I, I haven't thought about that, but I, I you know, I, I suppose you're right. It, you, it's time to maybe uh, think a little bit past the local. Um, I've been a very local guy. My books are set in, uh, you know, Gillette's castle in, in the state of Connecticut, you know, and I've, I've really concentrated really just on local sales, uh, you know, in the area around me. But I think, you know, you're right now with the Zoom and all that, it's not like you even have to travel or go anywhere anymore. Uh, everything's done, exactly. you know, like us, we're sitting in our homes doing this show, you know. Uh, That's right. And, and you can, if you find, uh, I'm sorry that I interrupted you. But no, no. Yeah, if you find somebody, look for these shows in, in anywhere in the country. And contact you. Somebody, an author in Los Angeles, could contact you to be on your show. So you're getting exposure yeah. in Connecticut. So we can do the same thing in, in every other state. Yeah. So the more that you, just do a search on on, on the cable television shows or local shows, or uh, and it doesn't have to be the uh, a cable show. Network shows can do the exact same thing we're doing here. So right. that you that get that exposure. It really, it's a good, it's a major point. I mean, that you get the uh, the national exposure without having to travel nationally. And so it's, it's, a, it's a great right. time for it because they're looking for the stuff to fill their 24 hours. <laughs> and they're, right. they, need, they need quality. But that's what getting back to that point, perhaps, if you have something about family activities at home, be a great, great idea. Uh, so it's, it's um, well, now's the time to do that. And then you're cr creating that habit too, creating, creating two things. You're creating a habit of expanding your opportunities but you're also creating the, the uh, uh, practice or, or the the um, performance on TV and radio. The more that you can do. I remember when I first started out on that, I wanted to. I didn't know how to for, uh, perform on TV, so I started my own TV show, as you have, on on, net, on uh, made cable TV. And I was thinking I would do it for the minimum 13 week period. But I ended up doing it for uh, 13 years, just uh, as a TV show about the Book Authority. So that gave me exposure, certainly a lot of exposure, not just in Connecticut, but getting guests on the show. Right. So it's something that just the, I guess the more you do, the more people you meet, the more likely that you are to be in the right place at the right time. So those are um, well, just for the media, some, some ideas for it. But the point you, you made is excellent, that you can uh, become a nationally known author by, without leaving your home at this point. Um, well, now, one point I want to get back to when we talked about distributing books in local bookstores, uh, not just bookstores, but uh, any kind of business. Um, sure. In the past, uh, I've had friends that own businesses, and one was a, uh, like a small uh, mom and pop grocery store, takeout food, um, and I put a few books in there, and they sold them for me. And another was a soap shop. Uh, where this girl took some of my books and I sold a few here and there, but the, the few times that I've tried or I've talked to people about uh, getting into like a grocery store, like stop and shop or something like that. They always say, well, we have a distributor, you know, we have a distributor. That's who we use it. We have a contract with them. Um, you know, we can't take your book, you know, you have to go, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I guess I, I can you give me a little bit more about the nuts and bolts about how you would contact the, those distributors? Or? Sure, sure. Great question. There are uh, several of the larger distributors. First of all, it's it's, it's common sense that they the, the buyers don't want to buy from a hundred different publishers if they can buy books from those hundred different publishers from one source. And you have to always remember that anything or in most cases, anything retail is returnable if it's not sold. So it's, they don't want to have to go back and forth with a hundred different publishers when they can deal with one distributor. So they, but if you go to a company like a uh, reader link or Cymac sales, you can look these up on through Google reader link and Cymac sales. will take your books to discount stores, warehouse clubs, uh, supermarkets, pharmacies. So if you go to that distributor and get them to get your book, then you can go to the, the, the supermarket, show them your book locally, and, and get them to say, my distributor is ReaderLink or Cymac. 
So and that CIMAC is in Canada, so you can get distribution in Canada also. They're in the U.S. and Canada. So that's uh, uh, there's a uh, choice choicebooks.org is a they, they, it's a it's a rack jobber basically. They set up racks in pharmacies and supermarkets, and they. Uh, they, they can take your books on. But uh, the important point you made before is that when you contact these people, you don't just send them a copy of your book and, and, a, and a nice letter. You're going to send them a marketing plan. But part of that it was a description of the target audience and description of competitive books, description of your, your product, the case quantity, the discount, the uh, number of pages, things thing that will help them uh, when they, they do what's called a planogram for figuring out the space on a shelf. So they they need all the the size of the book and number of pages, the thickness of it. So that's a uh, that's information they want. But primarily, what they want is you have to think that bookstores, retailers, distributors don't sell books. They the retailers display books, and the dis distributors fill a pipeline to them. The author is the one who is, makes the books fly off the shelf. The publisher when they're doing their promotion. So when you submit your plan to these distributors, it's very important to let them know the, the promotion you'll be doing so that they will feel good about the fact if they do in fact put your books on the shelf, then you're helping them. They want three things. They want uh, uh, increased store traffic. They want in, faster inventory turns and greater profit per square foot. So if you let them know that you're doing a lot of, of promotion, and when you do a, a local radio show, so you know, here are the radio shows I have set up, and uh, every one of those, I'll mention my book is in ShopRite or in, in Stop and Shop or, or in a PetSmart or in the liquor store, that things, places that are open now. So that your, when your submission package has to be, you're always thinking about it from the buyer's perspective. What do they want? Here are the distributors, the, the buyer from, uh, from you. So letting them know that you can make their job easier because you're making the retailer's job easier, helping them be more profitable. So they'll rather have your book on the shelf. Because retailers, whether it's a bookstore, whether it's a supermarket, if your book isn't selling in 60, 60 to 90 days, it comes off the shelf and they send it back because they want, they need that profit per square foot. Right. So, they, so that's what uh, you just being redundant here, but just make sure that you're the plan you send with your book has to describe the promotion that you are doing, have done, and will do. So, okay. And so let's say, uh, let's say I contact uh, one of the book distributors and they sure. say, okay, you know, we'll, we'll take your book. Now I would be responsible for getting them however many copies they want. Is that how it works? That's correct. They do. Uh, typically, they will, for a first time author, they, they may take 200, 300 copies of your book and then try to get that into the, uh, the system. You pay the shipping to that distributor and look at their, at their contract carefully because they may charge you a monthly storage fee. Uh, if you don't have insurance, they may charge you insurance uh, for that. If you don't have your own insurance covering your books. Uh, they have, uh, they may have a, a catalog fee that we have, that you pay to get in their catalog. So make sure that you read that, that contract. If you have several different distributors that you're evaluating, then make sure that you uh, evaluate the, their contracts to make sure that you're not spending a lot more money. Because if they're not selling your book, or they're not selling maybe five a month or something, if it's not moving very well, and you're still paying them fifty dollars a month storage fee. You're not, you're losing money. <laughs> so that's, yeah. Uh, that you yeah. have to be able to look at that. So that you bring up some really good points that that's something that you have to uh, know what you're getting into and, and how to do it. But once your books are in there, then they, they pay the shipping to the uh, bookstore. So your, your shipping is to them. And then at the end of the contract period, if they have books that they want to send back, you pay the shipping back, but they pay all the shipping to and from the, uh, the retailer while you're going on. Okay. Well, thank you. That was good. Um, that was a lot of good information. I, you know, I, I'm sure I, and I know a lot of authors, even in our group, you know, that are sitting on hundreds and hundreds of books. Um, you know, a lot of us went out and, uh, had a hundred copies of this printed 150 of this printed, and now we're stuck with them, you know, what I mean? <laughs> because, uh, there's really no, I'm almost ready to put a tape, uh, put a sign out in front of my yard that just says, you know, starving author, pull in, 
you know, <laughs> first time copy, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully when things come out and we can start getting out there, I, I, I mean, I, I love doing events. I love going to see people. I love to sign books for people, talk to them. Um, it's That's one cool. of my favorite things. Well, but think about the stores that are open now, you can still do that. If you had a book at, at Walmart or, or Target or um, a supermarket, you can still do those events. I mean, you have your you have your mask on, but that's uh, that's common sense. But he, but you can still do the event itself, and and people they like that kind of that, that thing now. The stores like it, and the people going in like it because it's a little bit of a diversion for them too. Yeah, you're right. I I'm uh, I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, uh, now the weather's getting a little nicer. Things seem to be easing up a little bit. People are yeah. getting out. People are moving around a little bit more. Um, I, you know, I intend to. But like you, you know, I, I don't have to tell you this. It's to. Uh, it's it's hard to. I want to really get my book out there. I want it to be, sure. you know, far and wide, not just in Mystic and Groton. You know, New London. I want to. I want people to, you know, I, I, I'm proud of it, and I, I'd like people to, to read it. You know, I'd like to see Certainly. it, you know, spread out a little bit more. So I um, I think that, you know, the advice that you gave us today was unbelievably good. I mean, okay. uh, some well, nice well. some nice things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you up on that and look into it a little bit more. Um, sure. Um, I hadn't thought about really doing radio and stuff, but. Like you say, maybe I could contact some people that have their own shows and stuff and maybe swap off with them. That'd be fun. You know, uh, like sure, I said, sure. I, I I would love to be on Los Angeles TV, you know, just to, uh, or a radio show in, you know, in the Midwest, just to, Certainly. you know, just to uh, let people know I'm here. Um, yeah. And you can sell, so, if you have your selling book off your book, so your book off your website, you can have them just go right to the website or for, through Amazon or from uh, BarnesNoble.com. So that you can sell sell a lot of books in the process while you're uh, increasing your national exposure. Yep. Well, that was you know that was great, Brian. We could probably go on for another three hours here because uh, I know we've only really touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, yes. But you are going to be our guest at the next Kappa meeting, right? I am. Uh, yeah, I am. It's great. On June seventeenth, I believe. Uh, I believe the third, the third, uh, third Monday. The third Monday. The third Monday, six thirty. Um, like I said, the date and the time will be up on the Southeastern Connecticut Kappa Association Facebook page. Um, I encourage everybody, especially Kappa members, to, you know, please, you know, jump in and uh, check it out. Um, and I will send the link. And I'll the winner of our the winner of our writing contest, which should be um, a lot of fun too. Um, so just to uh, just to real quick, can you give me the name? Uh, we got the radio dash locator dot com for the radio right. shows and bookchoices.com uh, choicebooks.org choicebooks.org and then there's uh, pida that the uh, pet industry distributors association and uh, reader link and cymac sales i think it's cymac sales.com and readerlink.com for, for distribution uh, great rep dot com for just if you want uh, sales reps taking you to uh, gift shops okay so those are all some right well thank you thank you so much brian it's been very a great welcome. show um you know i'll have to have you on again we'll have to touch a few more points um, sure a I'll lot more you know how about. i did uh I, I did my searches okay sounds um, good thank you so that's all for today folks uh for books and beyond uh, thank you very much for joining us hope you enjoyed the show and uh we'll see you next time thank you